Alright, what's up? MKBHD here. So, we got a little surprise, a little quiet but not so quiet addition to Apple's holiday season stuff. A little one more thing on top of their one more thing. So they've added to their headphone lineup. And there's a new pair of over-ear, wireless, noise-canceling Apple headphones. And they're called AirPods Max. And they cost $550. And I got them right here. Now, I didn't really know what to make of the name right off the bat. I don't think I would have named them AirPods personally, but hey, if you look at the rest of Apple's lineup, I guess all of their audio products have pod in them. There's EarPods, AirPods, HomePods, so fine. Either way, this is the box, and it's a pretty big box for a pair of headphones, but you can see we have this minty green color here today to get into. And when you pop that top, get into the top of the box, first thing you see is the headphones inside already inside the smart case because they don't fold, they don't pack down at all. This is how you travel with them. This is how they ship in this case with the bands as a handle. But we'll get to that in a minute. I'm just gonna take them out of the case for the first time and the metal of the headphones is actually legit cold to the touch, which is pretty sweet, not gonna lie. Uh, I can get the paper off of the smart case so we can admire that too in all of its uh, glory. Anyway, not much else in the box. You get a little bit of paperwork, no Apple stickers, and there is one cable, but not the typical cable that comes with headphones, no. This is a USB Type-C to lightning cable. There is no brick, and this is purely for charging, and there's no audio cable included. That'll be another 35 bucks from apple.com. But yeah, there you have the headphones, pretty unique. Uh, they look like those huge planar magnetic headphones from back in the day, but like a modernized version of that design. I guess it's kind of classic. This green here probably isn't the best looking color if I'm being real, but that's it. We can get it back into the smart case, slap that magnet shut, and we're off to the races. So it turns out there is a lot of really interesting stuff with this particular pair of headphones. I mean, you guys have seen headphones before, I've reviewed them, but there's a lot that's different, a lot that's unique about these that you don't really see very often. And so, while this isn't my review, uh, that'll be coming up soon, and definitely make sure you subscribe to be among the first to see that if you haven't already. Uh, this is just gonna be my first impressions and the top five things you should know about these new AirPods. So number one, the materials. Like I said, when I took it out the box, the metal was cold to the touch. So these have a stainless steel flexible frame, and then the ear cups I was touching are aluminum. There's these shiny telescoping arms and ball head joints on the ear cups that let them move around a little over 90 degrees. Overall, there is no doubt these are built very well. There's no creaks, no gaps anywhere. I mean, even the little slide to expand the headphones is really satisfying because there's a lot of resistance, and I think I actually like this more than the typical plastic clicks to expand. But really the materials aren't actually as important as the overall comfort. And these are gonna sit on top of the head pretty nice. That mesh band at the top is basically designed to distribute the weight as evenly as possible across your head and be kind of breathable. And it is really soft, which is awesome, but we'll see about durability long term. Uh, I think it's probably worth it though because with all this metal, they are heavy headphones. They come in at a hefty 386 grams compared to the much lighter 250 grams of my Sony XM4s. But yeah, I mean, as far as just high grade headphones go, aside from this one's particular lack of sweat or water resistance, uh, it, it just doesn't get much better built than this. That's just facts. By the way, the color options, same as the iPad Air. So black, silver, light blue, pink, and this sort of minty green. All right, number two. The ear cups, magnetic. So they just pop off pretty easily. They do stay on really well in their sort of groove when you're wearing them, and obviously most of the time they don't just flop off, but when you really do pull them to take them off, they come off. And that's actually really smart because most people should replace the ear cups on their headphones every once in a while. The metal part, the outside, that's designed to last a long time, but the inside, especially with softer materials and leathers, you see that a lot, people sort of outgrow the, the ear pad and then just buy new headphones. So this is a good idea. Now Apple is very happy to sell you some new ear pads for $69 a set. But uh, I guess a nice bonus at least is that you can actually mix and match colors if you want to. 
Would have been nice if you could customize your cushion color straight from the order page, and MacRumors even put together a little visual aid so you can see what the different color combos look like. But that's just the most Apple thing you've ever heard, isn't it? Buying $550 headphones and having to spend an extra $70 to change part of the color. But number three is the controls. So there are no touch controls anywhere on the sides of either of the ear cups, as there are with a lot of other wireless headphones. Instead, they borrow the digital crown from the Apple Watch, plus there's an extra noise cancellation button just to go on or off with transparency or noise cancellation. I might have preferred to see these buttons at the bottom of the ear cups for better reachability, but overall, this is probably honestly better than a lot of the finicky touch controls. I like when there's a physical control, like on Microsoft's headphones, having that big dial spinning, that was sweet too. So here on the Apple headphones, you can spin that digital crown for volume. You can tap it in to answer calls or double tap to go forward, triple tap to go back, etc. And also in iOS 14.3, when you update, there's uh, controls and support built in that let you reverse the scrolling direction for the crown in case you end up getting it backwards. Then number four, the case. So, uh, Let's just get the jokes out of the way right off the top, shall we? It looks like a purse that doesn't really hold much, and it looks like a bra. Like, no way around it. But for real, this is a super strange case to me. So they call it the smart case. It comes with the headphones. And the headphones literally just slot in here and close with a magnet. And my very first impression is there is no redeeming quality about this case at all. It, the headphones don't actually fold down or get more compact to travel with. The most durable part of the headphone is covered and the softest, least durable part is your carrying strap. It's the most exposed part. And then it doesn't even fully protect all of it. There's like slots in here. I understand you can charge here if you want to plug them in via lightning, but what is all this? What this, this case is weird. And then also something to note, there is no on off button with these headphones. So instead you put them in this case and when the magnet shuts, it detects that they're in the case and they go, okay, we don't need to be on anymore. It goes into this ultra low power state to save battery. And that's cool. That's really smart. And that means you don't have to remember to turn them off every time. And as soon as you take them out the case, they wake up and it's like you never turn them off. Easy. But now that means you have to use this case to turn the headphones off. And if you don't use this case, they will just sit around draining battery for about two hours before they go into auto low power mode. Not sure if other cases can be made that also use magnets to trigger this low power mode. That remains to be seen. But then number five, last but not least, is the smart features. So this is the part that's gonna require the most additional testing for me because basically, aside from sound quality, which first impression is very good, and noise cancellation is right about on par with AirPods Pro. Basically, they're incredibly good with white noise, but there's a lot more testing for this sort of thing for the full review, and uh, there's a lot of smart features too. There's the dual H1 chips doing a lot of computing as you listen to music, one in each ear. There's nine microphones this time for noise cancellation and transparency mode. And there are of course Apple headphones made to be used with iPhones and Apple products. So when you use it with an iPhone, you get features like audio sharing, uh, Siri, you're reading your text messages and the instant pairing and all that fun stuff. But like I said, I'm gonna get super into this and the audio quality and in-depth thoughts on all of this stuff in the full review. This is just the impression and there's a lot of testing to be done. But at the end of the day, you know what's the hardest part for me about these? Is I don't really know what exactly to compare them to. Like of course I plan on putting them through the ringer and, and very thoroughly testing them because at $550, they deserve that and you deserve that. But I guess I wanna hear from you in the comments section what you specifically want to know about these headphones. What do you care about? with headphones like this. Like my natural instinct, as you probably saw on Twitter, was to compare them to my precious, my, I mean, a lot of people's favorite wireless headphones ever, which is the Sony's and the XM4s. They're basically the top of the line industry favorite noise canceling wireless headphones. And as you know, those headphones have the absolute best noise cancellation I've ever heard. They're lightweight and comfortable. They have a longer 30 hour battery life. They actually fold for travel. They come with a real protective case they come with an audio cable and they're $200 less at their absolute maximum of 350 bucks, but you can already find them for less than that. So by that logic, at least on paper, Sony's headphones 
absolutely beat Apple's headphones in pretty much every metric, right? But I feel like a lot of people aren't going to use that as a comparison, interestingly enough. Maybe, maybe it's like the Pro Display XDR, where you have to compare it to the super ultra high-end reference grade stuff to appreciate it. So if I'm comparing it to my $2,400 Sennheiser headphones that I've edited with, maybe this is a lighter weight, wireless, smaller, cheaper version of that that works with more devices. Maybe that's the comparison. Or maybe it is somewhere in the middle with like, you know, the Sennheiser HT 650 or even the Drop THX Panda headphones, somewhere in that high-end audiophile range, except now it's just Apple's entry into that space. It's hard to say. But at the end of the day, if you're here for my take, for my first impression, I have listened to these for a couple hours now and they sound really good, but do they sound $550 good? I mean, you're starting to approach the limits of wireless audio, so TBD. Um, they are built extremely well, but does that alone make them worth $550? Not really. Um, they, of course, have all of Apple's smart features, and I don't think that by itself is gonna make you buy headphones that expensive, but maybe all of this stuff combined, maybe, just maybe, all of that put together well, there's an audience for it because they're sold out already. But either way, I hope to find that out all in the full review. This has just been my first look, first impressions of AirPods Max, a weird name. I'm not gonna get used to saying that for a while, but again, let me know what you think, what you wanna know about these headphones. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.